All right, good morning, Advantage members. Happy Thursday. It's March 10th, 9 a.m. my time, and the 5K account currently sits at $5,700 after taking a loss, a tight loss, on a BTC long trade yesterday. So if you all remember, yesterday we took this long position uh, around 4,200 or Actually, no, uh, 42,200. And uh, we had our stop at 42,000. So let me just show you all that trade real quick. Um, when we were up in this area yesterday, right, I was actually kind of counting for this thing to kind of break upward towards the March monthly open. And that was our target profit. Um, but it did not reach that. And in fact, you know, once we got into the trade right here, prices went up. And then they started to come back down and down and down. And once we got stopped out right here, I never re-entered that trade, right? There is no reason to re-enter that trade because once you start kind of breaking this ascending structure like this, which is where we had gotten in, once it started breaking down, it's you know pretty much uh, anyone's game at that point. And we knew for the most part that the CPI data coming out uh, today was more than likely going to create a lot of volatility in the market. Um, and so you know, I didn't decide to take another trade. If there was a time to break up yesterday, it would have been from here, okay? So <clears throat> one thing you got to realize in environments like this is markets are going to have um, a lot of whipsawing events, uh, especially in the bear conditions that we're in, the bear market conditions that we're in. Um, you know, here, here's a perfect example, right? BTC last week had ripped up uh, from these lows, let's just say from this low to this high, Right? It was like almost like a, a 15 to 20% move. Okay. And then after that, it came down, basically retraced that entire move almost 17%. Right. So again, 20% high, 17% down. And then again, 14 to 15% high. And now again, from this high, almost eight or 9% down. That's a lot of volatility. I mean, that's a lot. OK, so in any given week, when you have some massive, massive movements like this, just know that if you're getting destroyed in these moves, you know, you need to size down um, or you just don't need to trade. As you can see right now, first of all, last week's big bullish candle, it took three days to retrace almost the entire thing. Right. This bullish candle right here. Yesterday's bullish candle, it took less than 24 hours to retrace that entire thing. So you can see the conditions that we're in are extremely tough and they're hard to trade. And that's why in the 5K challenge account, or just even in my trading in general, I have been significantly sizing down. And if I ever get any little bit of profit on any trade, I am very quick to secure it. Why do I do that? Because I know that the momentum in any direction I take a trade, whether it's long, whether it's short, it's not going to last that long. Unless I have um, an extremely small size and I'm willing to take a swing short, I don't know, on a huge time frame. Like if I go short today and I say, hey, I'm not going to let go of my position until you know price reaches above this area. That's like an 89% stop. I mean, what is the point of that, right? Because the markets themselves are so volatile that they could squeeze up 30, 40%, just like you know, Rune did yesterday, right? Check this out. Rune ripped up yesterday almost 34%. That's not normal. This kind of stuff only happens in typical bear market conditions or in very aggressive, like at the blow off top of bull markets. And we sure don't look like we're at the blow off top of anything, right? We're in the midst of a large correction in a large bear market. So you're going to see a lot of volatility like this. And you just have to protect yourself as best as you can. Don't get down on yourself if you got stopped out on a bunch of trades uh don't get mad at yourself for you know losing money in this trade or that trade or going long or going short just kind of tell yourself that you're going to do better by tomorrow you're going to size down do all the right things that we've been constantly talking about okay because i know that these conditions can bring out a lot of emotions in people you can lose a lot of money you can lose your your headspace you can lose your emotions um, and a lot of people don't really trade uh, for a living like I do. So you may have other responsibilities with your finances for, from your trading. So you got to remember that the name of the game right now is protect and preserve your capital. 
at some point, the market will recognize what is the next big narrative? What is the next big thesis for the next bull market? And that's where the bulk of the money is anyway. That might happen this week, next week, next month, or later this year. I have no idea. With the way the market has been going, um, how sharp of a drawdown we've had and how much volatility we've been pricing in the last several weeks, I kind of figure like we're not too far away from starting the next bull leg. But that doesn't mean that we cannot have another you know, massive drawdown in the market before we create another base and then we start ripping up. And I don't just mean for Rune, it could be Luna or Solana or some other new asset that comes up in the next you know, two weeks or one month. Because if you all remember, no one knew what the hell Rune was you know, a year, year and a half ago. No one knew like why Solana is so big a year, year and a half ago. No one cared about... Adam and Luna and Matic and all these. It only took less than a year or a year and a half to have these assets become almost part of your uh, your day-to-day -day brand, if you will, right? Something that you pay attention to on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't think that it's going to take that long for the market to once again define what's the next big leg in the market that should be coming up, okay? But for now, we stay patient. In the 5K count, fully cash, not looking to get into any position because this is not an easy market to trade. Okay. Yesterday after spotting this head and shoulders BART position, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I've been sick, so I couldn't even trade it yesterday, but honestly, I would have shorted it, uh, shorted it in small size. Um, you can see yesterday evening, I pointed out BTC building a head and shoulders or a BART, um, be careful. And what happened after that? Bitcoin started to slide down literally two hours after I posted that, All right? So in situations like this, all you got to do is be careful in the market, okay? All right. Um, this morning, we had CPI data come out. Again, almost everybody was kind of expecting, you know, high CPI print anyway. Um, we got a 7.9% year-over-year print. So that's 0.4% higher than the last print that we had in January. That's not good. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big spike, 0.4% versus just one month ago. And guess what? Um, March is not going to be better, right? Like the print that we get next month for the month of March, that's not going to be better. So I'm really concerned about you know how the central banks how the Fed is going to react to uh, scenarios like this. Um, Marcus themselves, as I've told y'all before, um, I think they're going to be just a, a whole lot of chop fest, right? If, if you're going to trade um, like I do, as I've shown y'all before in the 5K count, I've been trading with extremely small size or very, very tight stops, okay? We're in profit in the 5K count. Um, it was a tough month in the beginning of January, but finally in February, we started to carve out in profit. And now we're just sitting cool, right? We don't really need to take excess risk on this capital. Um, you guys know very well, wealth is not really made in bear markets, right? Wealth is actually preserved in bear markets and then grown in bull markets. Um, but wealth is actually significantly destroyed in bear markets if you choose to make the wrong decisions. And I hope you all make the right choices because in the next leg, whenever that comes, I believe it's going to be extremely important for us to be able to have capital to play with um, and to be able to take advantage of the next bull cycle. Because if you all remember, I pointed this article um, to you guys, the Arthur Hayes article, where is it? Uh, <clears throat> there's an Arthur Hayes article somewhere here. Let me see where it is. Ah, oh, shoot. Arthur Hayes. This one right here. Okay. I pointed out this Arthur Hayes article a couple of days back, and I told y'all that, you know, the one thing that Arthur Hayes is really, really good about is looking at the crypto space from both a long-term perspective and a macro perspective. And what he's pointed out multiple times is whenever this bear market ends, right? Um, you're going to, first of all, get an absolute complete cleanup of the space, just like in 2017 and 18. People don't like to believe in that, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen to the NFTs. It's going to happen to GameFi and play-to-earn tokens. It's going to happen in DeFi. And I believe it's already happened, 
right? For the most part, I mean, a lot of tokens are already down 80, 70, 90% from the highs. But some of them are still relatively up, still in, you know, multi-million, multi-billions of dollars, which I don't think that's what they're worth. So whenever those get cleaned up, right, we're going to start the next leg of the cycle. And what Arthur Hayes mentions in this particular article is you're going to see a significant amount of money um, and, and capital flow into the crypto space. And I truly believe in that too, because there's only so many pockets of the stock market or the um, uh, asset markets in the world that are worth investing. U.S. stock market is one. U.S. real estate market is one. Bond markets around the world, whether it's in Europe uh, or America are another, right? Um, but other than that, crypto is just still growing. So all you got to do in times like this is survive. Okay. You take less trades, size down with your capital on a day-to-day -day basis. You pay attention to what's happening in the market. You know, oftentimes what happens is, and I'll tell you all a little secret about, you know, how, um, communities like ours work more often than not, um, a majority of people. Okay, majority of people will actually join at the tippy top of bull markets, whether it's here or here. And then, you know, once the market has a you know, significant pullback like this, or it starts ranging like this, people uh, still keep using high leverage and they start losing their money and they start um, pretty much, you know, looking for their exit out of the market again. This is literally how majority of people work. Okay. Because most people do not have the patience or the willpower to stay through drawdowns like this. Okay. A simple rule of life is that no pain, no gain, right? We've all heard that before. And translate that into markets. The rule is simple. If you do not grind out the bear markets of today and tomorrow, you don't get to, uh, you don't get to enjoy the pleasures of the bull market in the next week, the next month, or the next year. It's just a rule of life, right? So you can't expect that, well, you know, it looks like it's a bear market. I'm going to quit now and I'm going to come back wh where the bull market is. Do you really think that there's going to be some person who's going to tell you like, hey guys, uh, here's a signal. This is the start of a new bull market. First of all, people have been saying that for like the last two or three months, right? And when the market starts ticking back up, no one is going to believe it's a bear market um, getting over into a bull market until the market is up already, you know, 50, 100%, 200%. So this is why I kind of encourage people that, yes, it sucks. Yes, you know, I, it's even tough for me to make these videos every day because I can't false promise you guys and say, all right, guys, we're at the end of the bear market. We're starting a new bull market. It would not be uh, genuine, right? I wouldn't like to lie to you guys like that. So I have to be honest and tell you that this is a tough market. We are in a bear market and you just got to suck it up just like everyone else does. But if we do get through these times, the next week, the next month, whenever the next bull market starts, we will be ready because we will be more in tune with the crypto space. You don't just get to come into crypto a month or a year from now and say, hey, I'm here for the bull market. And then someone tells you to buy their bags like 10x higher, right? You have to be here day in and day out, week in and week out to enjoy the pleasures of hopefully, um, you know, becoming wealthy and uh, financially independent. All right. So sorry for that rant, but, you know, I often see um, our crypto space losing value and people getting out of the market and not building anymore or um, people complaining about their losses and stuff. Um, and I don't know what to say. I mean, you guys, I, I've made this as transparent as possible in our community with a 5k challenge account. I post videos at least, you know, uh, twice a day, right? Multiple analyses. We go over everything in the market. So there's no reason why your account from the beginning of the year should be less than mine. If you're taking more risk than me, you should be trading at a better percentage than mine right now. Okay. I take very little risk in the market and I'm still in profit right now. Okay. So you got to recognize where you are as a trader. Trust me, you still have time. No matter if you had 5,000 to start off with or 2,000 or 1,000, you will be fine in the next you know, few weeks or a few months. Just don't chop yourself to death and go to zero.
because once you lose your tools of capital, that's the only thing that you have to work with in the market. We as traders, as investors in the crypto space, we have our minds, our emotions, and the most important, our capital. If any of these things are uh, these th three things are out of whack, you're going to start, you know, destroying the other two things um, that are your tools. Okay. All right. Can I look at Soul? <clears throat> what is a Bart pattern? Um, a Bart pattern is just you know something like that looks like this, where it's like that. And then it just completely reverses back down. It's like Bart's head, Bart pattern. Let me show you all real quick. See like that. As you can see, this literally looks like exactly what just happened. This has happened so many times in the crypto space. This happened, look, in the 7,000 and the 8,000 area. It just happened today too. You know, very common in crypto. I mean, it's, it's very common, honestly, in every market, but we just decide to name it the Bart pattern in crypto. Crypto is very good at naming things like that in a hilarious way. So that's what the bar pattern is, okay? All right, can I take a look at Solana? Yes. <clears throat> All right, so again, Solana down 7%, retraced its entire movement yesterday. Uh, that's a full-on bearish engulfing candle, right? If it was a bearish engulfing like at the highs, you know, like right here, you might get another day of a pop and then reverse back down. But this is already at the bottom. You're like at the bottom of the range and you can barely get off the ground. You know, like think of someone, um, you know, think of a kid, right? Trying to get back up. And as soon as the kid gets up, there's some like bully and then just shoves the kid back down. That's exactly what the market is for a lot of these altcoins. Okay. Every time you try to get back up, the bully squishes you back down. Okay. It gets back up, squishes you back down. That's because there's so much sell pressure in some of these assets. It's just really, really hard to understand where a potential bottom could be. So I'm not even going to you know, attempt to talk about a bottom here. I have levels that I'm watching. You know, I have levels like I made up this Pepe meme right here. And I said, hey, it's possible that $50 is incoming in the next few weeks, right? I drew this, by the way, I don't know, maybe when Solano is popping here and here. I still didn't believe that we were going to end the market there. So it's possible that from here, we end down uh, somewhere near uh, $50. Okay, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> um, did you want me to look at Seoul on an hourly time frame uh, or what? Because I don't really know what else to say. I mean, it's just a market that's breaking down. Um, I could tell you about a couple of trend lines and parallel channels that I'm watching, but I don't think they're completely valid anymore. Uh, this channel, this red channel was kind of valid. You could see a lot of touches of the SR level at the channel. Once again, rejecting <clears throat> the channel right there. So if you're thinking about going short, right, you can kind of do it this way. You can say, I'll go short, stop above this area, which is around $91, target profit, which is first touch, second touch, and third touch. So if it drops down straight, that's $73 to $74 as a target profit. Okay. If you want a swing position for uh, Solana uh, for short, you go short now, stop above this high around 105 is a deep stop, a local stop around 91 and target profit anywhere between 58 and $50 down here. Okay. That's another way to look at it. This is the last little order block. If you could see right here before we popped up, right? Oops. Before we popped up, you know, so We've hammered it once, twice, three times, and every time it's like a lower high that we're getting, right? This is like um, basically like a descending triangle that we're creating. And descending triangles at the bottom of a trend, right, when they're forming like this, generally tend to break down, okay? They break down at minimum, at what I've noticed is like at least a 20 to 25% drop. So from here, a 20 to 25% drop is somewhere around I don't know, 65-ish dollars or something, okay? <clears throat> what do you think if we could, we would add to this BTC, uh, to this community, BTC price action daily trading exercise? What does that mean? Like you wanna trade Bitcoin every day? 
And what do you mean by that? Trading big, yeah, but what's the point? Right? Like if you already missed a good risk reward, you know, I, I think like, I think I understand, um, you know, what you're trying to say, which is like, well, no matter what the conditions are, like we should take a BTC trade. Well, why? Like when the conditions are bad, you should be taking no trade. Because remember, there are actually three positions that are in the market. There's going long, there's going short, and there's sitting flat. Sitting flat is actually a position because you're choosing not to trade. It's still a choice, right? So why decide to take a trade when the conditions are already terrible, right? So, okay, if you say that, okay, we should trade BTC daily, then you should accept not trading it as a choice. I could agree with that. I would, I would be happy to trade the market like that, but you know, you shouldn't force yourself to take on a trade just because the market is open. This is a fallacy about the, the 24 seven market. It's like, it's like the same thing as a casino, right? Because a casino is open 24 seven more often than not. Right doesn't mean you have to sit at the tables at all, all times, right? Because if you do, you're actually going to destroy yourself. You're going to invite financial ruin. That is just a fact. Because at the end of the day, the house, the market makers, the exchanges, they will trap you into buying and selling because you could see the day-to-day, minute-to-minute movement, and you will ultimately make a mistake sooner rather than later. So the question really is, why should you trade every day? Because the conditions are already bad. You know that. So in fact, rather you should ask yourself like, how can I not position myself in a trade today? Because the conditions are pretty terrible. You know, <clears throat> Ron is saying, um, looking and identifying and using liquidity pocket strategies. Thoughts on that? By the way, I don't have time to do it on a daily basis. Yeah, a lot of us don't. I mean, a lot of us don't have time the energy and the emotions to take on trades daily, especially in a shitty looking market like this. It's just not worth it. Sometimes we take on trades, hopefully because the risk reward is good. But if you get stopped, that's it. Something was wrong in your thesis. Something was wrong in your analysis. Then you go back to the drawing board and you think, okay, whatever move that happened, is it then going to position myself better to take the other side of the trade or can i still get into the trade is it still valid stuff like that right but other than that once you get stopped out it's done the the thesis is done you have to re-strategize right and sometimes you don't really even need to re-strategize because the market is so volatile that it's not leaving you know any strategy alive like whether you go long or short after breakouts or breakdowns you know the market is just chopping you to death because it's look, looking for liquidity on both sides. That's what a bear market does. It looks for wherever it can find liquidity, wherever it can find stops to be hunted, leverage to be hunted, right? That's all it is. Cool. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> Satish says, I heard this quote, uh, hard penny environment and easy dollar environment. Uh, heard professionals say, wait for easy dollar environment. Yes. So I think uh, if that's pertaining to the dollar right here, then I can see that, right? Because I think the dollar for the last, you know, several years, right? If you kind of look at this, okay. It, once it gets to these extremes like this, once the dollar starts to kind of consolidate and break down. So once it does stuff like this and it starts to break down, once it does stuff like this and it starts to break down, that's where the trading conditions become easier. Because a dollar that's ripping up is basically, you know, a magnet for uh, people to start closing out, you know, in risk asset positions, whether it's commodities positions or U.S. stock markets or crypto positions um, and start piling into the dollar because that's the safest trade, right? Being flat, being in cash and being specifically in dollars is the safest trade because it's the safest asset and the safest currency in the world. Okay. So yes, a dollar environment um uh, a hard uh, uh dollar environment like a uh, dollar that's ripping up is tough conditions for the stock markets and risk assets like crypto um today is a cpi data yeah uh, i already talked about this at the beginning of the video uh yes cpi data came out 
Uh, I mentioned this right here. There's the CPI data. We had it come out in the morning, 7.9% versus the 7.5% in uh, January. So not good um, at all, not a good sign. Okay, all right. Um, again, stay patient. As I've said before, we will get our time. We will have an opportunity to trade this market in a better way with better conditions. You just gotta sit tight, preserve your capital. I know a lot of you are putting on trades. Um, that's fine, do what you gotta do. But remember that you know don't blow up your accounts before the, the easier trading conditions start, you know, whatever that happens like a week or a month from now, okay, or a couple of months from now. Right? That's where you want to be able to start, you know, tacking on more risk, non-investment advice, but that's what I'm waiting for. All right. Okay. So that's it. Um, I don't really see anything in the heat map data. Um, I saw Luna open interest drop quite a bit, right? So that this is kind of a sign that uh, there's a lot of unwinding of Luna long positions. So, you know, even for Luna, things might get a little bit tougher. Um, BTC conditions, definitely a lot of unwind happening. I told you all yesterday about BTC USD um, right here, right? We already talked about this yesterday, right? I told you all that in this particular area, the CBD on Coinbase was already trending down. This is a clear indication that spot, which is what Coinbase trades with, was already trending down in this high. That means that the sellers were actually getting out of spot positions right here. It's not a good sign. Whenever sellers start you know, ramping up uh, selling spot BTC, that is not good. At the same time, let me see here. <clears throat> so now, and this is interesting, okay? This is very interesting because what you're seeing on Bitfinex is a real nice pop in open interest, but CVD is kind of still, eh, you know, still choppy, right? So this is kind of indicating to me that in this particular area, there might actually be shorts building. Let me see here real quick. Let's go check this out. <clears throat> see if shorts are building. Yeah, this, see that right there? That's shorts building. Where is that? Where's my trading light? Oh, there it is. That is, yeah, I think, I think uh, this open interest building like this, plus this going up like this, I think shorts are building right now on, on Bitfinex. <clears throat> Let me see here. What else we got? Uh, let's check out FTX. FTX also unwinding their longs. How do I know that? Price topped, headed down. Open interest topped, headed down. That means longs are closing and CVD Delta is also selling off. That means... Again, confirmation that longs are closing, okay? So selling happening, price going down and open interest going down is a clear sign that longs are closing. So FTX whales are closing out their longs. They're not going short though. Finance futures. What's happening here? Okay, again, a big drop in open interest. Delta trading down, open interest trading down, so longs closing. So again, this... Binance is closing longs, FTX is closing longs, Coinbase was selling spot, and Bitfinex is actually adding to shorts. Finally, last but not least, BitMEX. Let's see what BitMEX is doing. I haven't checked BitMEX as of late, uh, just because I feel like more liquidity is on FTX now and um, Binance futures. So similar, a whole lot of open interest dropped, right? So this is this was actually longs getting stopped out, like probably liquidated actually. Uh, this is a whole lot of chop. This is 
probably shorts building. No, this is longs building right here. How do I know that? Because price was going sideways, longs built. And then once price moved sideways like this, spiked up and then went down, the open interest went down again. So this was longs building again. They got annihilated again. Okay. All right. So that's about it. Um, that's all I have. No special liquidation data, nothing you know, too big adding up. Um, I've already talked about open interest. I expect open interest, global open interest to come down further. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, I will keep you all updated in the market. Until then, take care. Good luck and uh, cheers.